I believe that anyone, yes, anyone that includes you watching right now can get champ in 30 days time. But rather than just claim it, let me prove it to you in under 60 seconds. This here is the line of SSL. It represents the skill level needed to win games at an SSL level. That means on the X axis, you have hours spent in Rocket League and on the Y axis, you have rank. Therefore, if you draw a straight line from zero hours, zero rank, to let's call this the line of SSL, at 3,000 hours, you will see that anyone can get SSL if they put in 3,000 hours, right? Well, that's only half true because the truth is what you focus on, whether it's game sense or mechanics, will change how fast you can rank up. If you put 90% of your hours into game sense and just 10% into mechanics, yes, you'll rank up fast at the start, but eventually your lack of mechanics will catch up to you and you're going to plateau until you sink hours into training and you catch your mechanics up to speed. On the other hand, if you only train mechanics, yeah, you'll crush it once you get to GC1, GC2, and beyond, but let's face it, do you really want to spend 500 hours stuck in diamond just because you refuse to rotate back post? Honestly, if you're coming from my Twitch chat, m maybe. What this all means, and the claim I will make, is that if your target rank is lower, you can get there faster with less mechanics and more game sense. So that brings us back to the video title. This is my ultimate protocol for how anyone can get champ the fastest, and that if you follow, I bet you'd be able to get in less than 30 days. By the way, for those of you new here wondering where this stuff is coming from, I personally am a top 0.1% rated coach with over 6K hours in the game myself. But what I'm mainly known for in the Rocket League community is running RL's largest live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we specialize in taking plat through champ ranked players up to GC in just six weeks flat. In fact, last week we sold out all 120 of 120 seats we had open for this launch. So over last weekend, we hired two new pro coaches to restock capacity. We now have 40 seats available for a limited time only. So if you want that GC title or you just want a team with the now over 2,500 players we have inside the GCR, DM me with the keyword champ and we can talk details about coaching. My discord will be first linked down below. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Okay, starting off with game sense, I'm going to argue there are only four things you need to know to get up to champ in 30 days. First off, radius of coverage. Radius of coverage just stands for the area around your car that you can cover at any given time. Now, at base level, what you need to understand about radius of coverage is that radius of coverage in Rocket League is different than almost any other game. You see, in a shooter game, your radius of coverage is basically a straight line in front of you and anywhere, you know, within shooting distance in 360 degrees around you. So the mistake most players make is thinking radius of coverage in Rocket League is just a circle around your car, right? Well, no. In Rocket League, your radius of coverage is actually much more like this seashell shape here. And the reason is because it's much easier to get a ball in front of you in Rocket League than one even just slightly to the side or behind you because of boost. Now there are higher and higher levels to this, but if we're just talking about getting to champ, then my level one rule for you is that you probably have to stay distanced further from the play than you think you need to. This applies in tons of situations on offense, you know, maybe when you're pushing up and waiting for a pass, or on defense when you're getting ready for a save and hopefully playing back post. Trust me, if you just extend that distance, you're going to have such an easier time playing the ball and you're going to feel so much less awkward in your games. Concept number two, vision. Vision or field of view just stands for what you can actually see, all the information available on your screen at any point in time. Because of the way ball cam and car cam work in Rocket League, two players who are positioned in the exact same spot could have completely different views of the field based on their vision, how they're using their camera, and all sorts of other things. And so vision is a skill set that most players completely ignore, but you need to 
to understand if you want to get to the high ranks and make good decisions. I've talked more about advanced vision concepts like focusing your vision and moments of action versus moments of inaction in some other videos that I'll have linked on screen. But once again, if you're below champ, the only rule you need to understand that will get you 80%, 90% of the benefit from understanding vision is once again, staying distanced from the play. You see, the mistake a lot of low ranked players will make is positioning super close to the play. And when you get super close to the play in Rocket League, your vision is going to change rapidly and completely disorient you if you're not prepared. So as a general rule of thumb, if you ever feel like your vision is awkward, my recommendation for any low ranked player is to just take wide rotations, stay back towards your side and keep distance from the play. This will ensure you're never stuck under the ball, staring into the sky with zero vision. So once again, keep your distance, not just for radius of coverage purposes, but also to maximize your vision. Number three, corners. Just like in a shooter game has different maps and different angles you can peek and different choke points to hold. Well, in Rocket League, we have everybody's least favorite part of the field, corners. Because they're shaped so weirdly and the ball can bounce in sort of unpredictable ways, many low rank players drift too close to the corners and then end up whiffing the ball, you know, not being prepared for a bounce or just overall making poor decisions. Cause let's face it, corners are hard to play. But once again, if you're below champ, I can just give you a simple rule that I found works really well from students I coach. And that's simply don't push into corners. I know this might sound crazy, but you can avoid 90% of the corner mistakes at low ranks by simply not pushing into corners on offense and also not pushing into corners on defense. The truth is players at the low ranks don't have the control to move the ball quickly from your corners. So you gotta understand that in most situations, corners just aren't threatening. But if you're below champ or even champ one, champ two, just stay out of the corners and let everybody else at your rank play them. And trust me, free balls are just going to start rolling to you. <laughs> Moving on to concept four, the last thing you need to get down is the basics of rotation. The thing about Rocket League is you can't really play positions like you would in a normal sport. If you want to win in Rocket League, you'll have to play defense, midfield, and striker all in the same game. The reason is because if you try to just play goalie or midfield or attacking, your team isn't going to flow smoothly. And eventually you're going to run out of boost and you're not going to be able to sustain pressure or relieve pressure on defense. Point is, this creates this whole idea of rotation in Rocket League, where instead of playing a position, you're constantly rotating positions between three different possibilities. Either one, your first man, two, your second man, usually playing the more aggressive option, or three, your third man, usually covering the defensive option or last man back. Now this could be a whole video of its own, but at base level, all you need to understand about rotation is that you shouldn't stay on any one role for an extended amount of time. A lot of new players will fall into one of two traps. Either one, they think they're the permanent striker. This is the person that just always goes for the ball, is always grabbing boost, and is never back to defend. Type two, on the other hand, some people, when they get into Rocket League, think that it's okay to be a perma goalie and just sit in net. The simple way to fix this is to constantly move between first, third, second, first, and then back to third. Basically, after you make your touch on first man, get back to third in line, wait until one other teammate hits the ball, then move up to second in line, wait till the next guy hits the ball, and only after each of your two teammates have taken their turn on the ball are you allowed to go. Point is, if you can simply take your turn on the ball, make one touch, and then get to the back of the line, rotate out, if you just understand these basics, you will be at champ in no time. Okay, at this point, I know you might be thinking, Luke, that's great. Thanks for wasting my time with the boring stuff. What about mechanics? <laughs> what mechanics do I need to get to champ? And this is the part of the video where I'm probably going to get the most hate if I haven't already got some of it already. I'm gonna claim that you only really need seven mechanics to get to champ. Maybe plus or minus one or two. 
Here's why. Above champ and into GC, what matters most in game is possession. Which team has the ball most of the game is usually the team that's going to end up creating pressure, creating scoring opportunities, and you know, winning the game. However, below champ one and champ two, it seems like the exact opposite. It doesn't really matter who has control of the ball. It's more just a game of which side of the field is the ball on. If the ball is on orange side of the field for most of the game, usually orange gets scored on and they lose. And if the ball is on blue side of the field for most of the game, usually blue's getting scored on and they lose. I'm going to make the claim that you can win most games not by controlling the ball, but by simply keeping the ball away from your net and keeping the opponents under pressure. I'm gonna group all of the mechanics that you need, and I'm gonna call them one touch mechanics. Like it sounds, this is any mechanic where you simply need to make one touch on the ball. This includes basic shooting, basic fast aerials, and they don't even have to be fast aerials, they just need to be aerials. Three, basic wall play, not how to control the ball, but just how to hit it. Number four, basic recoveries just so that you're not out of the play forever. So air roll, power slide, we can kind of group into four. Number five, basic ground recoveries, which is kind of like recoveries, which is like half flips and wave dashes. Point is, you just need to know how to make contact with the ball consistently hard. You don't have to know how to fast aerial. You don't have to be fast or consistent with how you hit the ball. Your shooting doesn't even need to be accurate. You just need to be able to hit the ball consistently hard somewhere. As long as you're not whiffing, that's all you need. Okay, I imagine I've angered enough people at this point. If you have more questions like, you know, how do you actually train these mechanics or what order should you train these mechanics or any of the specifics like that, I'll have my most positively reviewed videos on mechanics and game sense up here. I think I have two videos, one's like the top nine mechanics you need to rank up and I have like the only things you need to know in Rocket League. Both of those have got really good reviews. I'll have those linked on screen here. Or if you made it to this point and now you understand how to get to champ and you wanna go from champ to GC, I'll be making a follow-up part two to this video where hopefully I clarify a lot more things. So click that video here if you wanna see that next. And as always, thanks for watching.